Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna to be doing a fridge test on the EB70. Now what's interesting about this fridge test is we're gonna have a 100 watt solar panel plugged in. Are we gonna be able to run the fridge forever? You know, normally you'd be able to get about a two day run time on this EB70 using a big fridge like this. Let's see if we can get a longer run time. Now I have the Pro set at 32 degrees and it's currently on eco mode. Now that's coming off the DC output into the 5.5 millimeter barrel connector. Now I decided to use the DC output because it's much more efficient. I didn't want to have the waste of the AC output. Now I have the solar panel plugged in here at the top and it's getting 16 watts input. Now it's early in the morning, so this should rise over time. Now today is a partly cloudy day, so it's a good actual real world test because you're not always gonna get perfect sun. Let me go ahead and show you this solar connection outside. It's 100 watts of solar, which is two 50 watt panels wired in parallel, wires going inside. I chose these panels because they're waterproof. I didn't wanna to have to pull them in and out during the testing. So these are just gonna sit here the whole time. They're facing south with a two by four underneath them. Now I chose this because most people are gonna be purchasing a 100 watt solar panel with their setup. I didn't wanna go putting a ton of wattage out here. Now by using these 100 watt solar panels, we're gonna see how much longer the fridge is gonna run with this constant input. So here's what I have in the fridge during the test. I didn't want to pack it completely full, but it's got quite a bit in there. Let's go ahead and get to testing. Okay, so I'm about five hours into the test and I thought I'd show you what's happening. Every time the compressor turns on, you can see it's pulling about 37 watts. The solar panel starts to compensate and just keep the battery at 100%. The only time that this is gonna be an issue is basically if it's super cloudy or just overnight. So let's go ahead and see. My next update will be tomorrow morning. Let's see how much the battery dropped in the morning before the sun can charge it up. Okay, 24 hour mark, we are at 80% uh, on the battery. So uh, it went down about 20% overnight. Let's go ahead and see if we can get back up to 100%. I'll do a update after work and see what we're sitting at. Okay, so last night is super busy. Didn't have a chance to check in. Let's see what the 48 hour mark is. Okay, so very similar to yesterday, maybe a little bit more power usage. We're actually showing a little bit below 80%. Uh, we have two watts coming in on solar just because the sun's not up yet. It should easily get to 100% today. Let's go ahead and check in at the 72 hour mark. Okay, so I'm doing a midday check-in. I just want to see where the battery was sitting. Uh, it's getting basically filled up completely with solar. It's sitting at 175 watts in. The fridge is not running right now, so it's zero watts, but I should expect this to stay full throughout the entire day. And then uh, just like the same pattern we've seen over the last 48 hours, it'll just go down about 20% overnight. But yeah, let's check in tomorrow morning. Okay, we're at the 72 hour mark. Now this is a downside of the EB70 is, you know, it has these chunks. So there's no way to tell exactly what percentage this is at. So, you know, the display could be better. And I talked about that in my initial re uh, video review. You know, we're getting three watts in just because it's uh, the panels are shaded still. The sun's not hitting the panels. So we have the same results of the last two days. We're down, you know, two notches on the battery. You know, with it being a sunny day, we should see it fill up completely again. Now, I'm not sure if I want to just keep repeating this over and over again. We've proven that a 100 watt panel is definitely enough to... Uh, not only run the fridge, but to keep the battery charged up during the day. So I think this is uh, definitely some good evidence. Um, as long as you have a mostly sunny day, um, you know, if it's completely cloudy, you're probably going to have to supplement in some more solar to get it charged up. Okay, so we're to the 96 hour mark. So we've been running this fridge for 96 hours on the Blue Yeti EB70, and we've never gotten past 50% on the battery. So what I wanna do is just take a couple minutes to explain uh, maybe some tips and tricks if you're gonna be running the fridge in a hotter environment or if you're gonna be running a longer time or if it's super cloudy. Let's go ahead and talk about those tips so you know how to run a fridge basically forever on an EB70. It was cool to see that you could basically run a fridge off the EB70, um, you know, basically for an infinite amount of time as long as you had enough solar to keep it charged. And enough solar means enough sun and so forth. Now, uh, the fridge was uh, in about a 75 degree environment, so if you kicked it up to 85 degrees, it would double the power, but we never saw more than a 50% uh, drop. It was usually around a 35 to 40% drop on this battery. So if you had a hotter environment, you probably would be okay. It would just cool down at night, right? 
and then you'd have your usage. And then when you got, um, you know, when the sun was shining, if you stacked maybe two 100 watt panels, um, you get about 150 watts. Because remember, this is the 28 volt limit and an eight amp limit. So the max you could ever get out of this with the solar panel, because there are no solar panels that put out 28 volts. Um, most solar panels put out around 21 volts and eight amps, so you get 160 watts. Now that's just a limitation on the EB70, so. You know, let's talk about if there wasn't any sun, because um, that's not really the hard part about taking a fridge camping and, you know, uh, having the sun there all the time, you know, guaranteed you can do that most of the time, you know, as temperatures and things align. But the problem is, and I've experienced this many times camping, is either your, your campsite is too shaded and you get like two hours of sun or your, uh, the weather's not cooperating and you have tons of clouds. It's raining and you just can't charge, you, you're running your fridge, you got to keep your food cold, but your battery can't handle, you know, the load for more than two days without being charged. So in the box, there's three ways to charge this. Obviously the solar panels, 160 Watts input max. Most people see 145 Watts. You have the DC charging. Um, so this will do, uh, what 13 volts at eight amps because the eight amp limit, 13 volts out of DC socket in your, in your car. Uh, you would always want to do it with the engine running. So your engine's running and uh, you get around maybe 105 watts out of this. And then uh, fastest way to charge it out of the box is this AC adapter. So if you ha took maybe a thousand watt portable generator, gas generator with you, um, no sun, you could charge the EB70 at 200 watts. So you get a full charge with the AC adapter. How about another fast way to charge it? Solar's not available. You didn't bring a gas generator, but you have a vehicle. So in my review video, I talked about this setup. Now, basically what you're doing is it's, it's the same process as this DC to DC charging, right? You're taking your vehicle power and you're plugging it into this, except for this is 12, um, this is 12 volts. So you need higher voltage to get more power. You gotta remember the charger here, the max charger is 25 volts at eight amps. Okay, so we got to get somewhere near 25 volts, 8 amps to get uh, full power into this battery. So the key to charging DC to DC charging faster, right? So you have a converter that's 12 to 24 volts. So 12 volts in, 24 volts out. You connect the input to your starter battery. While your car's running, you hook to that, the, you know, your starter battery. Alternators charging your battery. You're going to be pulling 12 volts, 20 amps. Out of your battery but this jumps it up to 24 volts and because you jump up to 24 volts it cuts the amperage in half right because you can't make free power you know power in equals power out so you have 12 volts 20 amps coming in you're gonna get 24 volts 10 amps out but the key to that is you're gonna hit that 8 amp limit right so 24 volts 8 amps you're gonna be charging this at a much higher level with this uh, converter. So, you know, this is an excellent way to charge this if you don't have the sun available and you're running a 12 volt compressor fridge, you're in the middle of nowhere, didn't bring a gas generator, you don't have a way to run this AC, uh, you know, DC power. Uh, this is going to be your best bet to charge this battery fast. So you would start your engine, charge um, your battery up. Um, you could also rig a way up to, uh, you know, connect directly to your battery and you could charge it while you're driving, if you're on a road trip, something like that. So I thought it would be helpful to show you other ways to charge it up other than just solar, because the sun isn't always available. And uh, this has been a really good option. I'll have all the parts to this in the video description, but if you wanna check the full build out for this, um, it's in my actual review video for the EB70. So check that out. Um, I have timestamps, so you can literally jump to the section that you want to talk about um, this part of, of the build. So. Now, I've had some questions about um, rigid solar panels versus portable solar panels and also um, solar panels and shade with the EB70. Let's talk about rigid versus portable, right? So these are portable solar panels. These are, they fold up, they tuck away, they go away when you don't want them. The problem with this is you, don't want, you do not want to plan to use a portable solar panel 24-7. Like if you're going to have it sitting out in your yard 
or on your roof of a shed or something and coming in and charging this all the time, you do not want to have one of these because they're meant to be portable. They're not durable enough to just sit out in the sun 24 seven. They're not completely waterproof. Um, so they just, they just don't handle the abuse of the sun 24 seven. So if you're looking to do more of a permanent setup, like maybe on the top of a van or on an RV, you're going to want to look for a rigid panel that's tempered glass, you know, a standard solar panel and use that accordingly. So, uh, most of my channel is about portable power, right? Portable batteries, taking a portable solar panel, running a portable 12 volt fridge. So I'm into these portable solar panels. Uh, someday I will be doing rigid panels. I have a shed that I'm going to put some rigid panels on and it'll be a fun project. But for now, that's kind of what I recommend using with these portable ba batteries is, you know, a portable setup. Now let's talk about uh, charging the EB70 with um, solar panels. Now, um, there was a question about, you know, is, is it a problem to stack panels in parallel? Um, will it harm the EB70? So basically, um, if you have solar panels in parallel, the voltage stays the same the entire time. So you put a 100 panel, 100 watt panel, 100 watt panel, 100 watt panel. All you're doing is you're keeping the voltage the same and you're adding to the amperage. Now, if you put a panel in series, you raise the voltage, but the amperage stays the same. So the problem with the EB70 is you cannot series panels. So if you put two 12 volt panels in series, it will fry this board because it's that goes over 30 volts and the max voltage on this is 28 volts. So you're stuck to paralleling uh, solar panels. But what if it's shady and you have five 100 watt solar panels um you know two 100 watt solar panels is going to be the limit there right you're not going to get more power if it's sunny but say it's shady it's completely rainy or cloudy and you're getting like 1.5 amps out of each solar panel in the shade or you know through the clouds can you stack those all up is it going to harm it no what you can do is you just put them all in parallel you know, the 1.5 amps, 1.5 amps, 1.5 amps, they all add up, but the voltage stays the same. It stays around 21 volts. So basically you can stack them all up until you hit the 8 amp limit. You can even go over the 8 amp limit. Um, I've put uh, 300 watts into this just to test and I didn't notice any issues. So, you know, I put 300 watts in parallel and it still stayed at the 8 amp limit. So basically you can just stack up your solar panel. Say you would always have 300 watts you basically put 300 watts in here and then as the shade or cloud comes or if it's raining or something like that you would always get the maximum amount like just imagine it here's your 150 watt um, ceiling right because this is the limit that this will accept in you have this 300 watts but if you go you know as the clouds come in your your totals coming down you can keep it above the 150 watt limit um, more frequently because as the shade comes in, um, you'll have more wattage to supplement uh, above that level. So hopefully that made sense, right? Um, no issues with uh, putting par uh, parallel panels onto this. Uh, it doesn't affect voltage. It's not going to. It's not going to damage it. Um, if you guys have any questions about AC charging, DC charging, using this DC to DC charger, the you know the converter, 12 to 24 volt converter, uh, any other panels. Um, go ahead and let me know, put a, put a comment below and I'd love to answer your question about using this EB70 with fridges or anything else. But overall, this has grown on me quite a bit. I actually love, um, this battery now. I was a little harsh on it in my review. Um, but you know, you just get used to this, the display, you get used to the fan on the charger, you get used to, um, you know, the, the slight solar limit, but overall it's a really good battery. It has a lot of power. It has the lithium iron phosphate. So you get the full 2,500 life cycle, uh, discharge charge cycles in this. Um, so it's just, it's a really good battery for the price. Anyway, I still recommend this for powering 12 volt compressor fridges. Um, never had any issues running my fridges on it. So that's basically everything that I want to talk about with this video. Uh, I had a little bit of talking at the end of the video. I just wanted to help you guys have, you know, some of your questions answered. If you guys like this content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. The main thing is also is most of my viewers are not subscribed. So 
If you guys like this content, I invite you guys to subscribe to my channel because then you'll be notified when all the new videos come out and uh, you'll know about new power stations, new solar panels, or new fridges, or any other DIY projects that I have going around because I, I have a big list of videos coming. I have a lot of products lined up, so hopefully you guys enjoy the future videos. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Today, you're just gonna wanna check them every few days just to... Okay, just got dive-bombed by a bird.